and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're gonna to be comparing two of the best budget bolt action rifles on the market right now. Now, one of them is veteran, being the Savage Axis II. It's been around for a very long time, and it's been doing very, very good. And the new one is the new kit on the block, being the Stevens 334. So they're both kind of owned by the same parent company, so the Savage kind of umbrella. But it's kind of interesting because Savage is kind of creating its own competition for its own top number one spot for the Savage Axis II. So the Savage Axis II retails for about 450 bucks. Like right now in Canada, that's what they're on sale for. While in the US, like the lowest you'll see them is around like 350. So they're like super, super affordable. And the Stevens 334 in Canada retails for about 550. And in the US, it's like 320. It is new to the US and Canada, this being the Stevens 334. And what's interesting about it is it's actually not made by Stevens. It's actually made by ATA Arms. So ATA Turka is actually the original rifle of this. And well, I think probably in 2020, uh, Stevens met with ATA and they're like, that is nice. You will make that for us. <laughs> and that's what they did. So they made an awesome, awesome rifle. If you haven't seen individual reviews on both of these, I recommend you do check those out. Uh, they're maybe a bit more into detail on each and every one of these in terms of accuracy. Now they're both very entry level rifles, but they have a lot going for them. So what you're gonna to need to know is the Stevens 334 only comes in three calibers, being the 243, 308, and 6.5 Creedmoor. And the Savage Axis II comes in almost every caliber possibly imaginable. And they both weigh just about the same. And frequently the Savage Axis II will come with a scope to top off the value, usually some kind of cheap Bushnell banner type of thing, which is usable, but not amazing. Another main difference between both of these is the Stevens 334 has a 60 degree bolt throw while the Savage Axis II has a 90 degree bolt throw. So very, very kind of big upgrade in terms of that. So that could help steer you in one direction or another. So one of the most important parts for this comparison is gonna be the accuracy. So we tried nine different brands, I mean technically 10 for the Stevens, but I kind of removed the last one. Uh, so in terms of a group of nine, the Savage Axis II had an average of 1.23 inches for a three shot group average, while the Stevens had an average of 1.09. So even while taking off the 10 shot group that I did with the, the Axis II, it still doesn't help the Axis that much more to catch up with the Stevens. The Stevens is significantly ahead in terms of accuracy. So 1.09 average for a nine shot group for the Stevens and 1.23 for the Axis. For the Axis, there were three of these groups that were below one inch. For the Stevens, there were four. We're at this price point, that's like unheard of. And I mean, the Stevens and ATA, I have two of these rifles. I have the ATA version and the Stevens and their accuracy on both of these is like Excellent, it's really, really, really good on both. So there's some very good consistency between both. So accuracy absolutely taking the cake with the Stevens 334. The barreled action. So uh, this is a button rifle 22 inch carbon steel barrel on the Savage Axis 2. The Stevens 334 actually has a slightly heavier profile barrel. I'm not necessarily sure if it's a button rifle barrel, they don't, I haven't really seen it on the website, so it's not exactly clear what they did. Uh, what's most important about these is the 60 degree bolt throw on the Stevens 334, while the Savage Axis has a 90 degree. The Savage has a two piece bolt design, while the Stevens is a one piece bolt design, more similar to the Winchester XPR, the Browning AB3. And in some ways, I feel like they kind of competed for a significantly lower price point to absolutely undercut the, uh, the, you know, the Browning AB3 and the Winchester XPR. I think they're offering probably that quality of rifle at this price, which is freaking awesome. Maybe it's just their introductory price and gradually it's, it'll work its way up, but I think maybe that was a factor. But there's definitely some factors holding it back from officially being at that price point. The bolt on the Stevens 333 is absolutely not smooth. I mean, just look at this, like you can, see visibly the resistance in this. Well, if we put the Axis 2 bolt back in, just gotta press the trigger, slide that in. I mean, this is buttery smooth. It's more the action itself once cocked that kind of like, it's a little bit loosey-goosey and a little bit clunky. Um, while the 
while the Stevens 334, it's a bit more, it feels more like a normal bolt action that you'd feel like a Remington 700 and such. So another big deal, which I mean, maybe not a huge deal, but it's, I, th I think it's pretty important, is you're gonna notice on the top part of this, uh, this action, we have a one piece full length Picatinny rail on the Stevens 334. Now, if, consider like if you had to upgrade from the Savage rail, like it's a two piece weaver slot design, while this is a Picatinny slot, which means I can put like any scope rings on this, while the Axis too, they have to be weaver slots because the uh, they're slightly more narrow and usually not necessarily up to certain standards, while the Picatinny is a more wide spacing and it'll take like every thickness of rings on this. So I'd say it's a big upgrade for the Stevens 334. Another big deal, which is super important because the rifle has to be accurate and reliable. The Axis 2, we do have a very weak ejector, which on strong ejection rifles, you're gonna notice some very, very light markings. At least this is from what I've, I've noticed on all my, my custom rifles. They all make little tiny dents on the action themselves like this. Well, on the Savages that I own, like it's immaculate. Like there's never even like a, a touch on it. And I think this is because of the weak ejector. <laughs> uh, the Savage, even if you're operating this bolt like with force and speed, it little like lazily toss that case out there. And even occasionally just fail completely to toss it out. I mean, it's got a good um, extractor, but the ejection is really the weak part of these Savages. While the Stevens has a strong extractor and a strong ejector, it'll toss those cases out pretty nice and far. So zero issues whatsoever with feeding, extraction, or ejection with the Stevens, while no issues with feeding, extraction with the Savage, but just some issues with the weak ejection. Also, since you know we have a 60 degree on this, this is less prone to get in the way of, let's say, a throw lever on a scope, and while the Axis 2 with its 90 degree could potentially get in the way. Next is the trigger. So this is one place where the Savage is going to outpace significantly the Stevens 334. The Savage has an adjustable trigger, while the Stevens does not, uh, which is interesting. So uh, the, the Savage has a bladed trigger that nobody technically likes, but it's adjustable between three and six pounds with a 0.25 pound variation. The trigger breaks nice and cleanly. There's very little creep. The Stevens 334, on the other hand, is very much the opposite. <laughs> it's a two-stage trigger, which I have no problems with two-stage triggers, but this one has so much creep. I think it probably has the most creep in almost any trigger that I have felt. So it's like close to the bottom in terms of trigger. And it's not adjustable, which is interesting because the ATA Arms, which is what this rifle is, has an adjustable trigger. I mean, this one sort of has one, but they put some kind of gluey gunk on it, so you couldn't adjust it. I think it was just their way of, you know, not giving you that plus and maybe keeping their access to maybe a bit more desirable. I'm not really sure what their kind of goal was in this. Or maybe it was ATA arms. They were like, well, they want us to not have a, an adjustable trigger to break costs. And as opposed to just redeveloping a trigger without an adjustable, without any adjustability, they're just like, just put some glue on it and be done with it. Maybe that's what they were thinking. I'm not exactly sure. So next is the stock. So the Savage again takes the cake for this one here. Um, for example, it's probably the most ergonomic one of all its competitions because this rifle, both of these rifles kind of compete for the lowest price point and it's competing with the Mossberg Patriot, the Remington 783, and well, obviously the Stevens 334, which is why we're comparing them. This one probably feels the most modern. It's the most comfortable, the most ergonomic. I like how here it really offers you some nice purchase on the front and has this little hook here on the stock, which makes it really comfortable. You got a recoil pad and this should be removable for adjusting the length of pull, which is really nice to have. Uh, it takes detachable magazines, it's pillar beds, and it has a recoil lug, which is not something you always see at this price point. Usually the norm at this price is just pillar bedding and sometimes not even that whatsoever. I think the Mossberg doesn't have anything whatsoever for bedding, so um, yeah. Well, um, and the Stevens 334, while it's not maybe as ergonomic, the feel of it is very kind of plain Jane whatever, um, it's got some kind of rubber inlay kind of here to make it a bit more comfortable, a little bit more grippy. It's a very basic design though. The design of the Axis 2, I'd say, is ahead absolutely of the um, 
the Stevens 334. But in terms of, let's say, pillar bedding, this is steel pillar bedded, and it has an integrated kind of recoil lug in the action itself, as opposed to a uh, design that's inserted into the chassis or into the stock, like the Axis 2, when it's actually kind of like the uh, Tika T3X, which has one in the stock as well. Now, both of these do come with sling swivel studs, as you typically expect at this price point. The Savage Axis 2 is barely free-floated, while the 334 is actually not free-floated, which is quite surprising. If you try to insert a paper in this, it'll definitely grab pretty much right away. But that didn't seem to slow it down for accuracy, which is pretty darn awesome. Um, both of these take detachable magazines. The quality on the Savage Axis 2 of the detachable magazine, well, it has steel, and it's, I'd say, a much nicer design. They put a lot more work and time into designing this. Well, the, I mean, the Stevens 334 is such a basic design, but it works. I mean, heck, even the Tika T3X, uh, they have plastic magazines that work reliably, and this one does work reliably. They both come with three round detachable magazines. And you can find five round detachable magazines for the Stevens 334. At least my AT Turka came with a five and a three round detachable magazine, which was quite nice. So, I know, the question you're, you're asking yourself, well, which one do I buy? All these words, what do they mean? In my opinion, I'd go with the Stevens 334. I think in some ways, <laughs> Savage may have created their own uh, their own replacement. I think the Axis may have, have, may have its own replacement here with the Stevens 334. They put so much, like, maybe it's the cost of labor in Turkey, because this is a Turkish-made firearm, that makes it so they can do all this for such a low price point. They did a more accurate barrel. They have a 60-degree bolt throw, a one-piece uh, one piece bolt design. They could do a adjustable trigger, but they didn't. Um, like all, all the things that you're going to want are, are there. Now, it is about 100 bucks more. So, you know, I mean, if you have 450, well, the Savage Axis 2 is your only option. If you have like 550 Canadian dollars I'm referring to, well, then I would recommend absolutely jump on board with the Stevens 334. It is a phenomenal option. And one thing I totally forgot to mention is the warranty. They both are covered under the Savage warranty, which is a one year, uh, you have to register the product, um, original purchaser only, but we all know that Savage has a amazing warranty, regardless of how long you've had it, regardless that you're not the original purchaser. I've had to send Savage firearms in before and they didn't really give a crap who owned it first. They just took it in and fixed it and sent it back. The fact that the Stevens is not made by Savage, I don't know how that's going to play out. I mean, so far it's been super reliable, but I'm not really how sure how they're going to deal with the warranty. So that's my thoughts on the Stevens 334 versus the Savage Axis 2. If you guys want to support the channel, you can head on over to cdnprecision.com. That's my website, and all the profits from that website really help the channel grow and make better quality content, help us buy firearms for you to keep up with the new guns that are on the market, such as the Stevens 334. So thanks for watching, Epic Arms.